Good evening and welcome to the regular business meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board on Tuesday, May 10th, 2016. If you'd all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number one, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Sorry. <clears throat> Seeing none. Item number two, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the school board minutes um, executive session Tuesday, April 12th, regular business Tuesday, April 12th, and executive session Wednesday, April 27th, all 2016. Second. All those in favor? That's okay. And item three, comments by student representatives. <laughs> Um, so let's see, right now at Cape High School, the, for the past week and a half, so last week and this week were the AP exams week, um, which is never a fun time, but we only have two more left. I think there's, I think the school only has two more. I think that uh, macroeconomics and statistics are within the next three days, and I believe that's, those are the only two left. Um, so that's exciting. Um, for the seniors, Friday is our last day of school. This is our last week. Um, so Montana and I only have three days of school left, which is like fantastic, but also terrible <laughs> yep. and surreal and weird. Um, but yeah, at this point, I mean, it, at this point, everyone is pretty much done with AP exams, except for the people who have to take macro and stats. Um, all the seniors know where they're going to college. So this whole week, um, we're having like a senior spirit week where every day we have a different theme. Um, we all went out in front of the school and wrote in chalk the name of the logo of the schools that we're going to next year. Um, so it's, it's been really fun, it's a really fun week. Um, like for us, we don't really have any work to do anymore. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> um, so it's been pretty relaxing and exciting. We're all leaving for STP next week. Um, prom is on Saturday and then we're all leaving. Well, not leaving, but you know, not gonna be at school for the next three weeks because we're going on our STPs. Um, so, but, yeah, sorry. so for those who still have a couple weeks left, um, we're kind of in the middle of fourth quarter right now. And so most students who have already taken AP exams, most of those classes, the workload kind of lightens up. You still do things in your classes, um, but it's not as much as it was prior to preparing for the AP exam. Um, tonight is the last band concert of the year. And for many of the seniors, this is their last band concert ever. And in addition to that, mock trial is heading off to Boise, Idaho. And I was on the mock trial team at one point, so I know how much preparation goes into that, and they spend a lot of time every night preparing, rehearsing, and so this is kind of like a big event for mock trial because they're competing against other teams nationally. And additionally, additional, in addition to that, um, Matthew Fishbein won the state championship in chess, so chess has been doing very well this year, again. And yeah, I that's believe it. that's it. Yeah. Just for the public, I would love if you guys would just tell us what STP means and a little bit about what that is. I mean, okay. yeah. our big audience, but people do yeah. watch this on TV. Okay, so um, STP is um, the Senior Transition Project, so every senior um, has, it, normally it's two weeks, but this week it's three weeks just because of the way that the calendar worked out. So every senior um, gets a chance to go out into the community, find a person who's involved in the career field that they think they're interested in, and you essentially just um, shadow them, work alongside <coughs> them for anywhere from one week to three weeks. Um, and it's just a good way to, for some people, determine if the field of um, the career field that they think they're interested in would actually be something that they could see themselves doing um, once they get out of college. For some people, it's just a way to, you know, maybe they have three different options and they really don't know what, the, like, they don't know where they want to go after college um, and they're just kind of testing out their options and seeing what they like. Um, for some people, like, I have a bunch of friends that are working at bakeries for three weeks and they're like, I don't know what I want to do. I just want to do something fun for three weeks. So they're going to work, like, at scratch or something. Um, 
So yeah. so yeah, and then I believe that STP required a total of 84 hours over the course of three weeks. So I you have to go. I mean, you can go for a certain amount of time each day, and it has to, it has to cover three weeks. You can't do 84 in the first week and then take two weeks off. It has to be the total of three weeks. And STP kind of. I just lost what I was going to say. About <laughs> I mean, it's a really cool opportunity. Um, a lot of students that I've talked to have done some really cool stuff. Um, I know my mom is actually hosting, like hosting one of my friends, um, and she works at Intermed in Portland. And my friend's going to be following her around um, with seeing patients, um, and she can actually go. And, um, she can actually, you know, watch surgery and do really cool fun things like that. I have another friend who's working with a cancer specialist um, because she's interested in doing something with public health. Um, I have a friend who's going to Connecticut to work in magazine publishing and is working at an art museum. What are you doing? I am going to a hospital and I'm going to be following a oral surgeon and an infectious disease doctor and for two weeks. And then for the last week, I will be over at Mainly Burgers, which um, Max Barber, who previously graduated from Cape Elizabeth, is in charge of. And so I'll be doing things like ordering, um, ordering the food that's necessary, um, organizing events. And what I was going to say earlier is that STP, at the end of the three weeks, we're required to give a presentation and kind of conclude what we've been doing for the three weeks and talk about it. And I believe we're presenting to freshman advisory students this year about our findings and what was interesting, what's not interesting. And so that's when STP wraps up with a presentation. Well, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I, we all appreciate hearing from you. Of course, yeah. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Moving on. Item number four, comments from the public on agenda items. <laughs> Seeing none. Moving on to item five, communications. Um, I'm going to give a brief update on our superintendent search for the public. Um, we have concluded our um, search. Our, our candidate withdrew. And um, knowing that these things happen, sometimes it takes more than one cycle of a search to find the right match. Um, we were prepared and will be moving forward with um, finding an interim superintendent. Within the next couple of weeks, the board will um, be able to hopefully conclude that search and um, we will get back to the public as we know more. But we are looking to um, relaunch our search for a um, full-time permanent superintendent next fall, early next winter. So that's what's going on right now. And over to Ruth Allen, who is standing in for Meredith tonight for our superintendent's report. Okay, and I have a fairly lengthy list. Um, congratulations to uh, Cape Middle School student Annie Guimond, who has been named one of Maine's top 10 environmental visionaries for her skyscraper farming video submission to Maine's Meridian Stories competition. Um, congratulations to her and to her teacher, Hannah Rohner. Annie will be recognized at the Blaine House in Augusta on May 25th, and she also receives $100. Um, the Cape Elizabeth South Portland Career Fair was held on May 4th at South Portland High School, and it was attended by uh, our juniors. Thanks to Cherie Inman and to Jane Eberly in South Portland for their efforts in coordinating the event and to the South Portland Cape Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce for their participation and support for the event. Um, our Spanish teacher at the middle school, uh, Susan Dana, one of our Spanish teachers, has been selected to present a session on traditional games in the digital world at the National Actful Conference in Boston in November, which is a fairly big deal. Um, our high school nurse, Deborah Braxton, has earned her national school nurse certification, which is also a very big deal. Um, we have 14 Latin I students who earned national recognition for the 2016 National Latin Exam. Um, let's see, I have Hannah Babcock, Will Pearson, Max Woods, Anna Freiberg, Zaley St. Jean, and Lauren Abrahamson, who 
Ern Summa Cum Laude, Quinn Hewitt, Allison Ingalls, Lotus Luke, Alex Riggle, Max Riggle, Andrew Flaherty, and Libby Palanza earned Maxima Cum Laude, and Rosalie Stevens earned Magna Cum Laude. So that was also a fairly big deal. Um, we have our sixth graders currently at Chewankee, and they have fabulous weather for this week. So, um, sophomore poster night will be held May 18th. We had a presentation on that um, at an earlier board meeting. And if you are interested in volunteering as a judge, we could still use a few more judges, so please contact the high school. Kudos to our choral music teachers, Becky Bean, Nancy Murray, and Joanne Lee for their district-wide choral concert on the 28th. The high school spring concert is being held this evening, and the elementary school is wrapping up its grade level concerts as well. Middle school concert will be held on Tuesday, May 17th. Congratulations as well to students in uh, Mrs. Lee's introductory guitar class, who's had a performance at Thomas Memorial Library last week. And it's easy to see why Cape Elizabeth was named as a 2016 Best Community for Music by the National Association for Music Merchants Foundation. Thank you, too, to Tom Lazat and Caitlin Ramsey for their contributions to the music program. And if you miss next Tuesday, you can see the middle school band live and marching in the Memorial Day Parade on the, on the 30th. The middle school will host a color guard and flag folding ceremony at a special assembly on the 27th, headed by, uh, coordinated by head custodian uh, Denise Ordonez. The high school musical, The Little Mermaid, is scheduled for May 27th and will feature some Pond Cove third graders as well. Senior class recognition will be held on June 9th. And graduation is scheduled for Sunday, June 12th. I'm sure those are dates you have. Yes. <laughs> and CIF has announced its Spring Grants Awards. So, um, to the library, uh, Pond Cove Library Learning Commons for 21st century learners, uh, there's a $42,840 grant for a collaborative effort designed to bring together Pond Cove's ever-strengthening technology integration program while updating the Library Media Center to create a fluid, flexible innovation space for students and teachers. There is a $4,950 award to Pond Cove first grade teachers to, to attend the Columbia Teachers College, the Teachers College at Columbia University Summer Reading Institute. This is a five-day institute focusing on innovative teaching methods, curricula, and revitalized thinking. Um, this is the group intends to pilot units of study for teaching reading at the first grade level beginning in September. And this is spearheaded by Amy Kieran and Linda Alfiero. There's $3,630 to fund the CAPES robotic team led by Evan Thayer. Um, this is for their solid modeling and 3D printing upgrade. This supports the team's goal of using solid modeling software to more efficiently develop prototypes and to complete robotics designs and to print 3D parts for their robots. Uh, there are $7,800 funding a middle school project-based learning initiative led by Laura Ellis. This is an innovative cha change in teaching methods and a way to engage students. The group's plan is to start small and successfully implementing grade seven, making it easier for other grade levels to transition to project-based learning. The High School Library and Learning Commons will receive $8,660 for, for a renovation, led by Carolyn Young and Jonathan Warner. And this, high, this summer, the High School Library will be transformed into a dynamic learning space. The grant will be applied to purchasing lightweight tables, mobile shelving units, and end caps. And finally, $5,580 will fund a High School Sexual Assault Awareness Day coordinated by high school students Carolyn Lengel, Natalie Gale, Maggie Gleason, Lily McKenzie, and Stephen Bennett. This event will be on May 23rd and is targeted at, extra, at upperclassmen dedicated to raising awareness about and giving strategies for the prevention of sexual assault. And that is the report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to new business, 
item 6A. I would like to just um, preview that really quickly. Uh, the reason that this item is showing up on our agenda again is that um, there was a procedural error, and it was my procedural error um, with regards to Robert's rules. And so um, we're just, for procedure's sake, going to um, vote again. So may I have a motion, please? Um, I move that we approve the Palm Cove School student early release schedule, providing five student early release days with a 1.30 p.m. dismissal. Second. And... Is there any discussion? Um, I would just like to say that I'm going to vote no, not because I'm opposed to early release. I was, um, ho I was appreciative of the teachers who came to talk to us two months ago, and I thought they gave compelling reasons for their need for early release. So I was appreciative of their, um, of their sincere ask, and I was also appreciative that they worked hard to make this a much shorter early release so that kids could be um, attended to at school and ride the buses as usual and take away any issues of daycare. And I'm just concerned that five days is actually less time than they had this year. So I'm voting no, not because I don't believe in early release, but that I, I would have liked to have supported their initial request for seven days. So, I'm gonna echo Barbara's comments. I think it's disappointing that we think that it looks like Professional development is something that was working. We seemed to have a request for more of it, and we ended up with less of it. Yeah, I would just say, and it's uh, not, uh, we can vote uh, however we vote, and we're not bound to vote how we did before, so I would say, um, you know, all the proposals the school board asked, uh, there was never a request from the school board to reduce the amount of professional development time. Um, so the proposal that was made last time actually reduced uh, professional development time because I think this just has the dismissal time for the students, but uh, the five-day early release uh, at 1.30 would actually reduce the number of professional development hours. So if uh, at a minimum, I think we should at least maintain the number, the hours of professional development because we never requested um, a proposal to reduce that. So I would encourage everyone and if possible to amend this motion to provide five student early release, release days with a 12 p.m. dismissal time. Are you asking for an amendment? I, I am. Okay. So we need to vote on that amendment? A second. Okay. And we need to vote on the amendment to have discussion of the amendment. So all those in favor of Michael's amendment. I'm sorry, I'm misunderstanding what we're voting on. We're voting on Michael, can you explain your- Sure, uh, the request, uh, the amendment I would make would be to keep the early release day scheduled the same way it is this year. Um, by moving it back to 1.30, um, it will be actually a reduced amount of professional development time for, for the for the teachers. No, I, I understand that part. Yeah. It's procedurally. So are we voting? Yeah, what are we voting? Are we voting to second his motion so that then we open discussion? On so his John seconded it, and because so if it's a friendly amendment, the the person who made the amendment can just accept it. Um, it I don't. You mean make the motion? Uh, uh, the amend. You can accept the amendment. Okay. Or you can, if it's not a friendly amendment, you need to vote on it, which is why we're re-voting tonight on last week, on last month. So right now we're just voting to accept Michael's amendment. But when you say, that's, that's where you catch me, is yeah, the when language. When you say accept his amendment, are we voting to put it approve his table? amendment? Or are we voting to put his amendment on the table for further discussion? Yes. The latter. You're voting, We're voting to put it on the table for further the discussion. Would then be open for discussion and would be then what you would vote on. Okay. So we would not be voting on the the, the motion on the table if we accept the amendment. Okay. Thank you for that. And we would be oh. discussing and voting. It replaces tonight. It replaces the it original. It would replace the current. It replaces the original motion. It replaces the current motion uh -huh. because you have a, now an amended motion. And then you would be discussing and voting on that. Should that motion not, 
should that amendment not pass, then you have the option of returning to the original motion. motion. Or we also have the option of right now not voting to accept the amendment. Correct. Right. Okay. Which keeps us with the original motion. The original motion. Yes. You have a motion on the table that you, if it's been amended, you have to vote about the amendment before you can okay. move on. And you're going to do this right this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Thank you for walking us through that process painfully slowly, because I don't think we're going to do this again in June. So at this time, we have an amendment on the table for um, five early release days at the, the time. Keep it the same way. The same as it is this it, year. It was this year, the same. And John has seconded that motion to an amendment. So now we need to vote to accept the amendment. Or, well, so all those in favor of accepting the amendment. Yeah. So let's open discussion. So I am accepting the amendment because it was the original request was for five days at a half day release day which would just extend what we've previously approved it's no change from the existing calendar um, and i truly believe if we're going to give somebody a half a day you may as well give them a half a day not an hour and a half um, because if you, from my understanding getting into professional development time you know there's transition time there's setup it's if I'm going to give time to the teachers to do this, I want it to be quality use time. I will say, however, that I think moving forward in coming up next year, I think we need to workshop it way before it comes to calendar. To talk district-wide more wholly, I think that's what's really hanging us up is process. Um, so if we're going to do something, I, I don't agree in half measures ironic about a half day um, but moving forward I would really not like to get into this again next year and talk about it in a more wholesome way can I speak yes yeah. Heather um, so I still sit in the position that I feel like the half days when there's a release at 12 o'clock is not taken as useful for the students and that they come home and um, a not, not enough is achieved on that day from my perspective as a mother who hears from children. Um, the uh, opinion and attitude and uh, thought regarding that day from the student's perspective. Um, and I felt like the 130 dismissal would take that aspect away and they're in school for a longer period of time just enough to actually make something out of the day. So that's why I think that I still believe in professional development. Um, I'd like to find another more creative way to make it happen where it has less impact on the school day and the teaching to the students. Okay. So that's why I'm voting. The way I am. Okay. Yeah, I voted uh, no from my original position, which was I feel it has uh, too much of an uh, impact on the students. Um, but what I didn't mention a month ago was that, you know, I don't want to look at it like we, we want to take away professional development day. But last year was an additional five days, which were on a trial basis, and those are on top of. I forget how many, eight, maybe six days seven. that go, seven that go with the school calendar that everybody gets. Um, so um, I wanted to make sure that everybody understands that uh, it's not whether or not you value professional development or not, um, at least not for me. And I don't think for anybody on the school board, I think we all do. Um, but I think that also in terms of Michael's point, um, I believe we did ask for creativity, and I believe we did ask for, uh, you know, to reduce the impact on students. And while the seven-day option at 1:30 was better than seven days at 12, 
there was nothing in between that and something less than five at 12. So I, I feel like we did ask, we did communicate you know, for options, and we didn't get anything that was on the other side of the table. Um, and I felt, and I feel, the 1.30 dismissal time is a compromise and fair and uh, least um, negative impact for the students. And though um, nobody has written in to um, say yay or nay about the latest vote in um, April, I've had many people come up to me and ask me, what is the deal with the calendar in Hong Kong? And I've said, I guess it was premature, said it's going from same five days but to 1.30 dismissal. And everybody I've talked to is like, thank you, thank God. So I'm, I'm just coming from, the, from that angle. Further discussion? All those in favor? Can we clarify what we're oh, in oh. favor of again? Uh, we are voting on the amended motion. So if you're five voting days, on five days, five days, five days, five days, five days, five days, five five days, 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 Thank you. So now I'm calling for a vote, please. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. And item 6B. And this actually has to be read word for word. May I have a motion, please? I move that we um, authorize and direct the superintendent. I move that we authorize and direct the superintendent pursuant to 20 A MRSA sections. 1486-2 and 2307 to deliver to the town clerk for display at all polling places the completed notice of amounts adopted at town council meeting for voters at school budget validation referendum. Second. And discussion. I, as finance chair, I would just like to really thank everyone for all of their incredible hard work. Catherine Mesmer, business manager extraordinaire, and district leadership team, for whom we have two here in the audience. All of the teachers that start school and then start budget process about a month later. Um, looking forward to doing this again in six months. <laughs> you should do. No. So, thank you for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All those in favor. Item 6C. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the following job descriptions HR coordinator, bookkeeper, and payroll coordinator, accounts payable clerk, and receptionist. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Could you share for us um, sort of the history of, of maybe an overview of what's changed and what we're doing? I would usually look to Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, business Hello. extraordinaire. I'm Catherine Messmer for the camera. I'm the business manager. Um, the reason why we're having you approve these uh, changes is we are rearranging if the budget passes as is, we are um, going to rearrange the office so that we have a human resources coordinator to help support the staff more, I mean, stronger. Um, my de department does an excellent job supporting the staff, but we want to change things around to help so we can support them even more. So her job title is originally a payroll coordinator. So she will be doing human resources. We, will ha we have one person in the office who does the town payroll, does the town AP, and does a lot of other things. She will become the payroll person, 
and then we have a third person who does school AP, and then other school stuff, she will become AP, accounts payable. Um, they're the people who pay the bills. So, um, and uh, speaking to the auditors, they also recommend that you break out, if you can, human resources and um, payroll. So we're trying to do this to help make it more efficient, but support the staff even stronger, um, and also make it more accurate to what, the, what they're actually going to be doing, so. Thank you for Thank you. the explanation and also the hard work I'm sure that went into shifting through. It was a group effort. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6D. I'd like to move um, approval of the following policies for second reading and adoption. JJJ, high school co-curricular and extracurricular activities, eligibility and code of conduct, and KCD, public gifts, donations to the schools. Second. Thank you. Barbara, would you just tell I just sure. a, I know we talked about it last time, but we a refresher. We talked about it last time, and there was a, a minor change to the JJJ policy that re was requested by Principal Shedd, mm -hmm. having to do with determining eligibility and helping be a little more precise in what we expect the administrators to do about that. It doesn't really change the protocols. It's just a, a little more clarity for administrators. The gift policy, uh, we had... Uh, slightly amended to be clear that we were asking the superintendent bring before the board for approval and public acknowledgement any bequest or gift of money or property that's of a commercial value of $5,000 or more so we can properly recognize it and uh, instruct the superintendent to to give uh, our thanks to the donors so those were the two changes from first reading thank you any questions or further discussion All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6E does not require a vote. I'm happy to speak to those briefly. Thank you. Um, I'll take them quickly out of order. The JJIAB series is <coughs> legislated requirements for public schools in terms of private school students accessing our co-curricular, interscholastic, and extracurricular activities. And the main two takeaways for you on that are two. One is that students from Cape who attend an accredited school can petition to be part of our sports or co-curricular teams if their program that they're in and paying tuition to doesn't offer them. So it's not allowing a student, let's say, that perhaps that uh, Greater Portland Christian Academy, uh, where there is a basketball team, to ask to play basketball for Cape. That would not be appropriate. But if there is not a lacrosse team and they wish to join Cape Lacrosse, they could uh, ask for that. They would be subject to the same tryouts, the same medical uh, histories, and so forth. And if a varsity team has been filled, um, it can also be a no because there isn't room but they have the same access that any other students in Cape Elizabeth would have from soup to nuts in terms of access to our teams and programs. Mm -hmm. And then all the rest of the series are just the applications and so forth. And this comes straight from uh, Main School Management Association sample policy that uh, reflects legislation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we ask questions? This is just for students at private schools. It does not cover people who are homeschooled. Homeschool is a different, different, policy. A different, policy. different policy. So I make clear. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Joe. Thanks. So I'm wondering, is it main school management's recommendation that we um, deny students from private schools who have a basketball team to play on our basketball team? But they're not allowed to play on our basketball team through the whole MPA. But that's an MPA rule. Right, mm -hmm. right. right. It's simply reflecting current, current practice and it's making it clear in policy. Okay. okay. So in other words, if you choose to go to Baxter Academy, where I think we have a couple students, they don't offer sports teams. Right. So the world is their oyster back in Cape, but if okay. you're at 
a Wayne Fleet, an NYA, a Greater Portland Christian, um, whatever, and they're offering the same teams we do in their league, that's not an allowable cross. So those are MPA rules that we're adopting right. into our policy. These aren't rules right. that we've discovered there's an issue in Correct. Drafts. No, this is all MSMA language saying, Thank here's you. where legislation is now. You should clarify it in your policy. Thank you. Okay. All right. That makes more sense to me. Okay. Anything else on the J JJs? Okay. The KCE uh, currently exists as uh, around our um, Kipples with Education Foundation and sort of a tip of the hat to them and thanking them for their grant protocols and so forth and helping us. We started a couple of months ago thinking that this was due for a look just because of some continuing cost issues that have arisen given some of the wonderful, magnificent grants that have come our way and trying to clarify our relationship with that granting institution. As we got talking, and thanks to the, you know, it takes a village kind of a deal here to talk this through, and, and a really perceptive comment, frankly, made by Michael Moore that I would thank him for. Mm -hmm. This is really about all granting institutions and our own internal workings more than any particular granting institution and their relationship to us, because they are all independent. And the question is, how do we process them internally? So the conversation changed to that direction. So out of respect to both CIF and anyone else we approach, their names will be out of the policy, and what we're calling this now is receiving grant funds and clarifying internally how that would happen. So if you bear with me a second, you'll notice a lot of strikeouts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can, and I'd like, it's because I think there's some public interest. Let me quickly just go through it. The Cape Elizabeth School Board supports the pursuit and use of grant funds that will enhance educational opportunities for our students. The board desires to work cooperatively with faculty and administrators in determining the purposes for which funds may be used to meet the needs of the district and its students. In order to manage resources and to assist in planning for future years, grant requests with a monetary value of $5,000 or more that meet one or more of the following criteria must have the prior approval of the business administrator, the superintendent, and then be reviewed by the school board. One, involves cost to the school department <coughs> for installation. Two, requires facility improvements paid for by the school department. Three, require the school department to pay for additional staff either immediately or as the grant funding concludes. Four, impact buildings and or grounds. And five, require long-term cost commitments by the school department. Grant requests with a monetary value of $5,000 or more require the approval of the business administration administrator and superintendent, as do all grant requests with a monetary value of 5000 or less, which meet one or more of the above criteria. Grant requests with a monetary value of 5000 or less, which do not meet any of the criteria above, require the approval of the building principal. In other words, it stops there under 5000 I think you heard a couple examples as Ruth Allen read some of the requests that just came in around. Uh, first grade teachers traveling to Columbia Teacher College. We don't, we don't need to hear that's a principal approval. It was 4,000 some hundred dollars. They'll travel, they'll get some fabulous professional development. Uh, the one that is over 5,000 that would in fact come through the business manager and the superintendent would be the 5,000 plus on the sexual awareness day, which frankly is a, another fabulous thing that high school principal approved, but would be appropriate for the superintendent business manager to be aware of an expenditure of that amount of money was our thought. Uh, no, no sense in trying to kibosh brilliant ideas. Instead, trying to have a, a better internal flow of information as some of these larger grants come to uh, fruition, um, and especially uh, if they meet any of those mid-criteria which have impact for boards in the future, trying to keep those programs afloat, uh, evaluate their effectiveness, and so forth. So this was our first effort, first reading, and we would appreciate any of your comments or questions as we go into session again and bring it back to you for a second reading. I'd just like to appreciate that um, that this there's a, a lot of thought that has gone into this and um, some really nice work with different with CIF and other institutions. So I appreciate that, and I really like um, and it could it, I think it may have come from Michael. 
the, the prior approval so that I, you want to, I feel that I'm sure C feels like, well, you know, they've gone through that grant process and to have it approved after the fact didn't make a lot of sense. Didn't make exactly. So I really like that change so that once it goes forward, that it's just moving forward with that approval. And I think that's a really nice process for CIF and other <coughs> processes. So the last thing I'd like to add in terms of the wording that's in here is we really tried to be as flexible as possible to allow as much to happen as possible while still looking out for the responsibilities of the board to be aware of and consider ongoing costs or obligations that may be created by money that we're receiving. Um, and there's, you know, the intent is to treat, keep it as open and um, free as possible, to let as many things happen as possible, but still fulfill our obligations. And that's why it's really more of an internal process about how we go and seek money and what, the impact of that. Just one clarifying, <clears throat> given that now it's called grant, um, and I haven't thought through this, but do we look at it through the lens if we get, uh, you know, federal and state grants, title, the multiple titles? So if, if we're that, unless it's identified, I don't know the ramifications, but given it's called grant, I don't yeah. know if that would be applicable. And we don't need to answer that, but we might want to think through, you know, that how that money's used and if, if that would, you know, no, that's a good point. Well, whether it's ourselves. private grant front funds private or whatever, state yeah, or federal and state. Right. Maybe that's the that's the added word. We'll talk about that. Thank you. Okay. Well, I just wanted to echo the from the beginning. Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation has been our school's partner in being an innovative supporter of some of the most fabulous things that have happened in the district and. I love the, the, the way that this has been crafted forward. I know that there's been concern that the creativity and the innovation that has gone into their initiatives, there was a concern that um, changing the policy would perhaps put the brakes on some of that really important innovation like the Achievement Center at the high school or some really fabulous things that have been happening with the robotics team and the printer. and, and while being respectful of the resources it takes in order to maintain those gifts once we receive those. And we still have to be then responsible moving forward. So this is a lovely balance between the two. Um, so good work. Yeah. And um, I, I trust that, is it Ellen Jordan, has been in, in close collaboration and in the loop and absolutely several reps from CIF mm -hmm. have joined us twice and we've had great, great conversation in fact one of their asks that we um, incorporated here was not that we have a formal vote to accept but, but, but rather that we simply review and listen to what the superintendent has to say about these larger grants that may have some additional cost impact but that was a direct request from them and we accepted it terrific so to an extent also what this policy now reads mirrors very closely what we are currently doing with the minor addition that we are now formalizing the process that involves the board in, in having visibility on grants of a certain size and potential ongoing commitment. And it clarifies for our yep. administrators what's yep. expected of them in yep. terms of keeping the superintendent in the loop of any possible uh, granting opportunities. I did have one other question and I'm wondering in order to help make the process more objective, if maybe we want to think about a procedural portion. Mm -hmm. So just sort of a checkbox to make it clear, does your grant fall into this category and then follow through? So that, it, just a thought, we have forms for procedures for lots of other things in the manual that right. maybe one more form is not what we want. Mm -hmm. But in, in my experience in, in dealing with money and grants, sometimes making things as objective as possible helps it's it. It's also possible to simply incorporate in here that the business administrator and superintendent will uh, create procedural um, steps for their administrators or something without having tons of... To codify it. Yeah. Sure. 
any further discussion? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for that work. You're welcome. Item 6F. Mayor Hamilton. Yes. Motion, please. I move that we approve the superintendent's nominations of the following personnel to third year probationary contracts according to 20A MRSA 13201. Um, Panko Catherine Atkinson, Danielle Hessert, and Amanda Marsden, Middle School Linda Cho, and Terry Shevitz, High School Jacqueline Bromage, Nicole Carrera Ciro. Sure. Um, Kirsten Donovan, Heather Fahrenbach, and Kevin St. Jar. Um, instructional support, Susan Bahadori and Kristen Tivanian. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6G. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the superintendent's nomination for the following personnel to second year probationary contracts. Joshua Chase, middle school teacher. Elizabeth Murphy Lewis, Son Simpson. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth Murphy Lewis, social worker. Son Simpson, teacher. And Elizabeth Thomas, college counselor at the high school. And district wide, Molly Kellogg for gifted and talented specialist. And Rosemary Cooey for a school psychologist. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6H, may I have a motion please? I move that we approve the superintendent's nominations of the following personnel to first continuing contracts. Punk Cove School, Tom Chaltre, teacher. Aaron Taylor, nurse. Catherine Whipple, teacher. Middle School, Stephanie Buffard, guidance. Paranorius, teacher. High School, Deborah Braxton, nurse. Candace O'Brien, teacher. Jonathan Werner, library and instructional technology specialist. Uh, Elizabeth Yarrington, teacher. And Carolyn Young, library and instructional technology specialist. Second. Ella, yeah, any discussion? Is there, there, does it spill on to the I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6I, may I have a motion, please? Motion, the superintendent of schools to be authorized to execute and deliver vote to authorize amendments to Maine School Management Association property and casualty insurance declaration of trust and participation agreement documents. May I have a second? Oh, I second. Thank you. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> But either Catherine or thank you. Having no idea what I'm about to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, you did something like this last year about this time, but it was for the un the Main School Management Unemployment Trust. This is for the Main School Management Property and Casualty Trust. They need 75% of their members to vote and approve the changes to the trust. And so that this is what this is. It doesn't affect our insurance that we have with them, or it doesn't affect anything that we have with them. They just need our approval to update the trust language. So um, in your packet, I believe there's a copy of the email that we received from uh, Anita Falkelmer at Maine School Management. So this is just a formality. It's a very confusing formality, but it's a formality. <laughs> Seems like if Thank you. we are so cooperative, we should have a slightly less increase in our insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> but just to clarify, the trust is the vehicle by which Maine Management Association um, receives the insurance from <coughs> members, and this is the governing document that needs to be updated periodically, and that this is that periodic update that's yes. requesting. Yes. Yep. Any further questions? Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Item seven, committee reports. Well, from your friendly finance chair. 
Um, there is the next two steps on the budget process is the town council formally votes to send the um, amount to the voters, and that would be Monday. I feel like it's the 19th. The, the 19th is a Thursday. Yeah, so I don't know why it's in. So it would be Monday, Thursday the 19th. Thank you, friendly <sighs> business manager. So Thursday the 19th um, at, in these very chambers. And should they um, vote to accept the amount, which they have indicated that they liked the amount at our workshop when we presented the budget to them, then it goes to referendum, and that is June 14th. Vote early, vote often. Uh, All right, maybe not often, but <laughs> definitely early. <laughs> Other committee reports? Yeah, I I've, I've spoken enough about you, well, <laughs> We've had a lot, yeah. and we thank you. Thank you. Um, Are there any subcommittee meetings from, we heard from? Wellness or any? There, there's been, I guess there's been one meeting of the um, Spurwing oh, School Spurling. Committee. Spurling committee. Uh, I'll give a brief update. So the Spurwing School Committee, of which we have two school board members present at their first meeting of uh, recently sort of as an organizational meeting uh, sort of planned out the uh, additional schedule and uh, appointed a chairman which is the member at large Jim Walsh um, and we are sort of proceeding from there the next meeting will be to go over and uh, understand exactly the what the, the state of the building so how it, and how it can be used um, and then proceeding from there thank you cool thanks for serving Circle and there's no more community so. services advisory. What, is that right? Com no, the community services is no longer in our purview. Oh, um, I'm on that one. Uh, <laughs> no, there's really nothing to report. No. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. It's okay. Just, <laughs> um, I think I think the only thing that they're uh, trying to come up with creative um, solutions to is and this won't be solved overnight, is um, offering the students a place to um, work out and use machines without impacting paying customers at the fitness center. So, um, you know, there's some teachers and some coaches that have asked to be able to have access to that, um, but there, there has to be consideration given to the, you know, the members of the, the community who are paying, and that goes for the pool as well. So it's sort of an ongoing discussion. Uh, it's, it's sort of philosophical. You know, we're all community members. Right. Um, so, but no decisions have been made or, or suggestions. Any other committee reports? Um, we're gonna circle back around really quickly. I do have one resignation to report. Um, high school teacher Siobhan Bogle has resigned her position. She will not be returning for the 16-17 school. Thank you. And now back to item eight, which are school board agenda requests. John? So um, at some upcoming meeting, and I'm not sure exactly the appropriate timing, but I'm sort of following up on what uh, Joanna was referring to either, either earlier, I think that we should really take a look at our school calendar and school day, uh, and, and if we're really opening it up to look at hard, I would suggest that we also consider um, what our start times look like, mm -hmm. particularly in light of the recent changes by adjacent districts, which makes things should make things easier to coordinate in terms of some of the after-school activities. And there continues to be mounting evidence that in, that uh, point towards later start times for high schools and earlier start times for elementary kids. So, so Montana Dan, looks yeah. very disappointed when you say that. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> Montana the school senior sitting next to you look very disappointed when you said that. Now? <laughs> you were here before I did. You thought they used to have request them long ago. <laughs> and that, that looks, it, I imagine that's going to probably start out as a workshop type item. That's fine. Item. Yeah, I, w I okay. want to get it on the horizon yep. agenda. I think it's an important issue for uh, uh, both the health and well-being and for the performance of our students. Thank you. 
And as always, um, agenda requests do not have to come through business meetings. You're welcome to um, email or call the superintendent and um, ask for those agenda requests. Moving on to item nine, announcements of upcoming meetings. Barbara? I would just mention the final policy committee meeting of this school year will be Monday, June 6th at 7.30 a.m. Thank you. I'm so excited you've kept the 7.30 a.m. Monday you know, start just time. stop. <laughs> <laughs> it is not my start time, if you were looking at my needs. But I... So the Spur Wing Committee has a meeting at 7.30 as well next Tuesday morning. Oh, you have two 7.30 meetings. Mm -hmm. I apologize, Heather. In a row? No. No. No, not in a row. Not in a row. OK. Not in a row. Not the same week. Up with the sun. Hey. Early morning starts are good. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Maybe. Uh, and, uh, any other upcoming? OK. May I have a motion for number 10, please? I move we adjourn. A second? All those in favor? Well, I Your did first it. motion. Thank you. It's still daylight. I'm not sure we can do this. <laughs>